James Kaufman, World News Report. Today, today is September 26, 2023, 11.30 a.m. Central here in the USA. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we obviously have one of the in flares that was Earth-facing that they refused to admit impacting Earth once again. Most of our KP indexes here start at 300 UTC time and are ongoing for what looks like about 12 hours. We'll start with the Boulder KP index from 3 to 6 UTC time or from 11 central time last night to 11 a.m. central time. We started out with three hours of a geomagnetic disturbance, followed by nine hours of a geomagnetic storm, again on our Boulder Index. Looking at our Fredericksburg Index, again, we started out at around 11 p.m. last night, Central Time, and we're continuing to go. We got started with three hours of a geomagnetic disturbance, followed by three hours of a geomagnetic storm, followed by three hours of a geomagnetic disturbance, followed by three more hours of a geomagnetic storm. The last print was at 11 a.m. this morning, just minutes ago. Down to the estimated planetary index, the one that NOAA and NASA use. We started at 11 p.m. last night with an impact. Uh, geomagnetic disturbance followed by nine hours of geomagnetic storm and we'll take a quick look at the college index here we had actually we started at 1 a.m and had nine hours of a geomagnetic storm g2 class geomagnetic storm so, ladies and gentlemen, we will be expecting another print in a few hours to see if we're still in the storm. I do have a real problem finding the storm on Discovery. We'll take a look at that. All right, looking at real-time solar winds, i.e. Discover satellite, all the storms began at either 3 UTC time or 6 UTC time. And here we see really no action we see a solar wind pop from 421 to 505 after 3 UTC time. But plasma is not in any space weather territory and won't be for some time. Finally, finally, at 11 UTC time, uh, not 11 a.m. right now, uh, we are hit by significant plasma. This is going to be the tip or a glancing blow of another CME with about 22 centimeters cubed of plasma. And this is ongoing. I believe it's still ongoing. Anything above 10 centimeters cubed is considered a geomagnetic storm, i.e. a coronal mass ejection impact. And we have solar winds back up over 500 kilometers per second. I don't understand why they're moving the same way again. You can also see at the top here, we started crissing and crossing. So it looks like the geomagnetic storm really began right before 11 UTC time. Now, 11 UTC time would be 4 a.m. in the morning. Not 11 in the morning, as the KP indexes indicate. Uh, again, we have this little pop to 505 from 420 that could have caused a disturbance for those first three hours, starting at three here to six. The question is, is what happened from six to nine? I see absolutely nothing that would cause a geomagnetic storm or disturbance. So all this is questionable at very best. Even looking at some of the more sensitive instrumentation you can see that we might be ready to break that space weather threshold but that's now not at 3 UTC time there's been no electron flux whatsoever 
hitting our GO satellite, and we see no protons doing likewise. Although we saw that polar cap absorption event yesterday out of the blue after an M1 class solar flare, we see nothing that passed the space weather the threshold for the last three days. No proton storms here, folks. With that said, folks, NOAA has put out another warning for a geomagnetic storm to impact Earth for the day. Minor geomagnetic storm watch for September 26 UTC day. More minor storm likely into the overnight with another CME from the 22nd. I guess that was the origination date. We'll take a look at that. Conditions remain elevated with a CME that left the sun on the 22nd of September and brought G2 levels of storming on the 24th and G1 levels on the 25th. Another CME from the 22nd is likely to pass near Earth on the 26th, further enhancing the solar winds. This coronal mass ejection will be its closest point to Earth on the 26th of September. G1 levels are most likely on the 26th of September. The solar wind environment that is already enhanced from an earlier coronal mass ejection. Another CME is thought to have erupted in and around AR3435 on the 22nd of September 2023. This region continues to be one of the more complex regions on the disk and has a history of producing M-class flares. The coronal mass ejection was modeled above, and while most of the eruptive material will pass behind and south of Earth, any glancing influences are likely to create a minor geomagnetic storm response since conditions remain enhanced with other CMEs from the 22nd. The earlier coronal mass ejection brought a G2 moderate level of storming late on the 24th of September and G1 minor levels today, the 25th. So let's jump back and see what kind of explosions we had on the 22nd. All right, it looks like we've been hit by the first two M flares and they're playing with the day of the 22nd now. It's like we had at least four M class solar flares on the 22nd, 23rd, 24th. I would have expected this storm much sooner. We also have two additional M flares, one that popped off on the 23rd here, another on the 24th. So either of those could also be what's in play. I would further suggest that those are, are the solar flares that will be causing the coronal mass ejections glancing blow. I just don't see how they could have happened on the 22nd and then taken four complete days to get to Earth, 92 hours. God bless you guys. Share, subscribe, and always remember anything's possible in Bizarro World.